our fight is vertical. And why is it vertical? Well, let's think about it. Greensboro Cedents, the Belvedere Revolution, the Upper Thigh Divestment, Black Lives Matter. These are only some of the manifestations that successfully mobilized student population for a change, a needed change that come from beneath the system, from overshadowed communities that wanted their voices to be heard. And now, more than ever, than a global pandemic raised the eyebrows of some, we, as students, strive to ensure that the future of our planet is heard. Because we, as students, are one of the main actors of change. And we know that there are some major organizational transformations within the international sphere. But historically, there were students, student mobilized, that consolidated and spurred value in um, reforms and policies that are woven in the conception of commitment to social reality. And even when we are unsure, even in the darkest times, there will always be a little spark that will ignite our lost hope. And in hindsight, this hope is Greta Thunberg that now more than ever symbolizes our struggles against climate change. She, in a matter of months, made her movement become one of the most prominent um, drivers for renew transition to renewable energy. And we as students are now here thriving for a needed change. And to this question, what are we as students at John Cabot University doing? Endowing my support as the president of the John Cabot University student body, we gladly join the fight against climate change. And we not only take accountability for the welfare of our students, but we also venture in raising awareness, in challenging each level of the institution for them to understand our vision on how to behave vis-a-vis -vis our planet. And we envisage a future in which our university will be committed to climate change. And we are proud to say that in this university, there are student organizations that take leadership, take direction in this endeavor. And one of which is, of course, the Grassroots Club, that primary endeavors to educate students faculty and staff in environmental issues and who achieved to make their initiative a thing that it's called the JCU Community Forest that achieved to plant 4,437 trees. And then we have our fashion club who endeavors to educate us in the issues of fast fashion and especially on how the production facilities bring a burden, disproportionate burden, to the environment. And then, of course, we have even the business club who wants to open the discussion, even with professors in the business courses, to talk about environmental issues. And, of course, there's us, student government, who we cannot be exempt representing the whole community from bringing our voice, the student's voice, into this conversation. And we are committed to raise awareness, to bring action into the three main pillars that we identified as something that we could endeavor in the future uh, year, at least. First, the food sustainability, which would show our commitment in minimizing food waste across every section of the institution. Then we have carbon management, which will basically show that we as an institution are committed in reducing carbon emissions. And last, we have environmental education, which we as students thrive and are curious in finding and facilitating 
are tools to understand and grasp and even just talk about environmental issues. And this is our vision. This is our dream. But as a student, it is not only our aspiration to dream big, it is our inspiration to make these dreams a reality because we are the future. And as the future, I want to urge you to just rethink if you underestimate the impact of your voice because that is not true. We are here, students, faculty, and even administration staff, we are here to empower everyone's voices to be heard. And in the end, it is up to us to decide when and if we want to ignite that spark that makes change possible for us, for our planet, for our future.